Welcome back to Raised by Wolves. I've been thoroughly impressed with the show so far, so I don't see that changing in this one. However, um, I am expecting some answers to some things at some point, and I feel like we're getting kind of late in the season, so I better be getting something in this episode. Bro, what are you doing? I know. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Please tell me this is a dream. This is freaking me out. Uh, uh. Oh my god. Oh. Why are we starting off with... <laughs> oh my god. Alright, it has to be a dream, but what the fuck? Oh, that was not cool. Leave the damn mouse alone. Are you gonna be okay? No, not even a little bit. Yeah. Is this mother? Yes, it is. How many times have we returned to this wreckage throughout the series so far? Three times? Four times? Shut up, I say! And at this point, I'm also like, shut up, go knock, away. Knock. Who's that? It's Morse code. Oh, it was Morse code. Soul is the light. That's not quite what I was expecting the Morse code to say. Is is he actually, like, I don't know, um, being friendly with father? Does he miss father? It kind of seems like it. Okay, the breathing is, like, making me unimaginably anxious. Please slow your breathing. What the fuck? That looks terrifying. He'll be coming out soon. I promise. You planning an escape, Mary Sue? I hope you are. Could we go without him? Ooh. All right, then. Yeah, we could. Just keep it between me and you. Okay, so she is 100% planning an escape. And she's going to take Paul and Campion. I would assume all of the kids. Ugh. Macaroni in a pot. I'm uh, not feeling it. I've lost pairing with my brothers. What is that? It moved. That's unusual. What? It's reacting to my touch. And your inevitable breakdown. Is it a tumor? Or... I feel like they're implying so, that it's... More fuel blood? Yes. Like, alive. Like, she's pregnant or some but shit. don't look at me. That doesn't you seem need to find possible, more though. As... That means you must yeah. stay away from that atheist kid. Oh, okay. my gosh. I hate needles so much. It's been a while since we got a flashback. It's one of the atheist kids. Oh, shit, okay. Because I can't do it without you. It's not really much of an answer. Fucking hell. It's all that matters. You and me. You and me. Yeah, honestly, I would swear allegiances to whoever the fuck at this point. It's just about survival. I don't know why, but, like, the... the the milk blood is so much more uncomfortable to me than oh hello tempest is the best but anyways uh milk blood is way more uncomfortable to me than actual blood for whatever reason put a little surprise in there for you it's some meat because i know how much you like that <laughs> ah fuck what you doing buddy did mommy put you up to this no. no. So he, he's like really losing it. Oh, well, you're not planning something. Definitely no. knew that already, but it's just not hiding anything. It's becoming so hiding. obvious that like no. he's he done lost his damn mind. Yeah. Mom. Why are you calling your mom? I'm just asking a normal question. Cause this is like huh? really uncomfortable. Okay. Get the hell away from him! Shit! Don't touch me. You're not taking him. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, uh, everything just kind of went to shit right there. Jesus Christ, dude. Not gonna lie, though, that was kind of stupid to be like, alright, we're leaving right now. Like, shouldn't have said that. Like, how does everyone not see, like, shoot, he's kind of fucking losing it, bro. Oh, Jesus Christ. It gets more irritating the more I hear it on this show. What is he digging for? Is, you, is he trying to dig his way out? Wouldn't you like to hear another? I'm gonna help you break out of there. I have an idea for something you can make. Cool. 
but you're not gonna Despite being raised pacifist, and his siblings often played war. I suppose it's just human nature. God damn it, dude. What are you doing, buddy? Going for a walk. I'm sorry about what happened. Do you forgive me? No, you're not. It's fine. Ew. So he used the hands of that, um... That creature? Show me that I am on a righteous path. I need you to show me. You're so far off a righteous path, it's that hilarious. Tell me what I should do. Well, that's a pretty smart plan. Make a distraction. Burn down the church they love so much. See, this right here makes me think even more that there isn't really any kind of god or, like, powerful influence. It's just the way people interpret certain things that happen to them. God damn, the music in this show really gets me on edge. Alright, so... Father, are you... Are you gonna help him? Like, come on. Please don't tell him. I won't. They're going with. You take us with you. Hell yeah. Alright, cool. Fine! <laughs> Fine, whatever. <laughs> Hug later. Hug later. We gotta go. They followed the formulas they discovered were encrypted in their scriptures. What? No. That powers you was a gift from that was soul. very unsettling, but down from the they didn't even create the necromancers. They just found the schematics for it. Regular blood would help, right? That seems like such a weird concept. Oh, hey. I'm telling you those things are humans. Like, there is no way they're not human. They look human. Don't use that blood. I'm sorry. Please don't. Please. You. I mean, there's just really no way Campion could win in a fight against Father, but maybe with Father not. Oh shit! <laughs> Solid shot. Come on, Father. Now or never. Holy shit! God damn. Okay, he's like actually trying to kill him. So, there's a lot of very disgusting imagery in this episode. What is happening? It's the strangest interpretive dance I've ever seen in my life. I'm not a fan of any of that. Move! Let's go! Let's go! Everyone out! Let's go! Did he sabotage it because he knew they were going to try and leave? That's kind of what I'm assuming. That's fucked up. No more of this, please. Oh shit. Mother. Aww. She's like, okay, you don't gotta tell me twice. So now she's like hungering for you blood. Because of whatever is growing inside her. Yeah. But what the fuck is going on in this show? <laughs> Thank you, Campion. Campion! This way. Hey, move. Go! Thanks for the weapon, dipshit. Are you really gonna do some soul searching like right now? Oh my gosh, the audio is like giving me chills. Child mother. Child. What? Child will always be a part of you. This is your reward. So she's actually I need to get back to camp. Pregnant? What the fuck? What about the mission? I don't want that! Dude, I'm like no, tripping out. <laughs> no! How is that possible? Bish, what? If this episode ends right here, I'm gonna be fucking mad. Like, I just said I'm getting a little irritated with not getting any answers, and this just hit me with like a couple more questions. God, what the fuck, dude? I'm torn because it was a lot of forward plot development, but at the same time, they're like, you know, one step forward, two steps back. Like, all right, we're making progress, but here's 10 more questions. You have no idea what the fuck is going on. So I'm starting to be a little torn on the show, to be perfectly honest, because I think it's exceptionally well made and it's very engaging. But I'm genuinely not enjoying 
how little it's giving me. And I feel like at this point, I should be getting some answers to some things, and I'm just not. Like, I'm getting literally nothing. And to make that worse, they're throwing even more questions on top of that. And it's making me really worried that this is going to be one of those shows where literally nothing is answered in the first season because it's been confirmed for a second season and they're like, oh, well, we'll just answer it all then or even later than that. And I really don't like that. I think if you have some kind of mystery in your show, at least half the questions, preferably a majority of those questions should be answered within a season's time and then only have a few Know, loose threads to answer in a later season or throw on some more questions to be answered at a later time and I'm feeling like in the next three episodes that's just not enough time to answer all the questions I have at this point like who is Tali who are the voices that uh, Marcus is hearing why is mother now pregnant who is the champion that she sees in the simulation what are the creatures that have been roaming around this whole time? What's that big rock structure that was in the middle of the desert that they just kind of left and it doesn't seem like they're going back to it? How did the mouse not die and then show up again? Like, I don't know. I feel like there's just too many questions for them to conceivably answer in the next three episodes unless it's really, really rushed and I don't want it to be rushed. Like, as much as I still am enjoying the show, I'm getting worried that it's not going to satisfy me the way I think it should. But for this episode in particular, there were a lot of things that I did really enjoy. Obviously, the main thing I didn't enjoy was it didn't answer shit, and it gave me more questions. But I love the escape plot during this episode, seeing Campion, Paul, Mary Sue. I always forget the names of the two other girls. But seeing them all reach an epiphany and work together to get out of that situation I think was very satisfying and definitely moved the plot forward like there's shit going on. I sincerely hope Tempest ends up running into them and doesn't get stuck with all the other uh, Mithraic people. I'm curious to see what's going on with Hunter and Father because it, it kind of seemed like he was disappointed that the Morse code spelled out a message for Saul rather than something else like he had anticipated. I get the feeling he actually misses Father, which, if that's the character development that they're going for with his character, perfect. I love that. Because good lord, I did not like him <laughs> at all for quite a while. And he's the reason Father was killed and then reprogrammed in the first place, so I think that would actually be a very well written choice for them to have Hunter be like the savior of Father. But maybe not, maybe he's so ingrained in the Mithraic that he really is happy that Father's gone. But I don't know, that's not the vibe I was getting. Marcus, uh, I find myself more and more impressed with the actor. Um, and for the most part, I've never really found him to be that spectacular, to be totally honest. Like Travis Fimmel has obviously done some very good work in the past, but I mean, he's never been like the guy where I was like, he was the best part about that. And I still don't think that's really the case here, but I do think out of the roles I've seen him in, this is probably my favorite. That being said, him losing his goddamn mind is starting to feel a little bit old for me. And we haven't really gotten that far into his, like, craziness. But I don't know, it doesn't seem like he's going to be snapping out of it anytime soon. And I worry that for the rest of the season, he's just going to continue to be more and more insane. And there are ways to write that that could be very compelling, but I'm a little iffy on it. I, I worry that it's just going to get repetitive. Because here it just felt kind of repetitive to what happened in the last episode. It's just getting more extreme. And then obviously there's everything having to do with Mother, which I just, like, I don't know what the fuck is happening. I feel like there should have been more build-up to it, to be totally honest. Because it kind of feels like her pregnancy thing just came out of absolutely nowhere. It wasn't like in the last 
two episodes, um, she started complaining about, you know, like, oh, I'm feeling a little discomfort in my abdomen, that's strange. Which I suppose you could argue, you know, if it's a child growing in her, it would take, you know, maybe at least a couple weeks to really notice what's going on. But she's also a goddamn android. I feel like they could have sped up the process and I'd suspend my disbelief on that one. Because to me, it just felt like it, it came out of nowhere. It's like, all right, so she was seriously, seriously injured. And she's complaining about discomfort, so obviously it has to do with her injuries. But no, it actually has... It's because she's carrying a child all of a sudden. Kind of came out of nowhere. I don't really know if I like that. I think, once again, her acting during all those scenes was spectacular. Because for the most part, she's only interacting with either one other person or, like, nobody at all. And the way she's able to display so many emotions over something all at one time makes her a character you can't take your eyes off of. Like, it's very engaging to watch. But again, I still don't know if I like the twist that she's pregnant. Maybe if I knew how she was pregnant, I'd be a little more into it. But at this point, I'm like, I don't know how. Like, they explained that it's because of whatever happened to her in the simulation, but that to me, again, I'm like, that doesn't explain shit. I don't know what she's seeing in the simulation, because it can't honestly be Campion. So I'm assuming she, like, made herself pregnant somehow? Like, I, I don't fucking know. Again, I think I would enjoy that storyline a little bit more if I understood what the fuck. And now she's craving blood for the thing, so whatever it is, it's gotta be actually alive. Not just like another android that she's creating. Which, even more so, I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, how? Cinematography in this episode was pretty spectacular. There were definitely more shots in this episode that really stood out to me than there was in the last episode. Particularly, almost anything having to do with Mother. Um, everything was shot in such a either surreal way or in a way that made her feel extremely vulnerable which i thought was pretty awesome like it was it was very well done and the whole sequence of her in the simulation again combined with the visual effects there like that was very very trippy <laughs> i liked that a lot music in this episode was also very spectacular there were quite a few moments that were extremely unsettling moments that were very emotional but it was still done in the very distorted kind of synthesized sound that the show has made clear as its own which i quite enjoy acting wise i i really want to give it to someone else because there were a few pretty big players in this episode but i still have to give it to amanda collins like she is so good but more so her realizing that she's pregnant and then not believing it while also being so terrified of it was very impressive and honestly kind of sad. Um, I can definitely see the parallels that they're kind of drawing to her and Tempest's character, how it just kind of came out of nowhere and they didn't want this. But because of the circumstances that they're put into, they really don't have a choice anymore, which is pretty horrifying. And again, I think Amanda Collins just, she sells it with not only the dialogue that she has, but just her facial acting is so good. Editing and pacing, um, I would say this episode was actually rather fast paced. Maybe a little too fast paced, because they threw like quite a few things at me in this one. But I don't think it was uh, too bad. I mean, again, I feel like I wouldn't be hesitant on if it was too fast paced if I knew something. I just don't know anything. Like, I don't understand like what the fuck is going on with almost any of the characters i don't know that can only last so long before it really starts to get frustrating and i'm definitely at the point where it's getting frustrating for me overall i'm gonna give this episode an 8 out of 10. i think the storyline involving mary sue and the kids escaping was very strong i really enjoyed almost all of that but i think the storyline with mother is just too goddamn confusing for me. I didn't want another new mystery on top of all the other ones I already have. And I thought the stuff with Marcus Caleb was just a, a little too repetitive. Like, I get it, he's going crazy. Can I get an answer as to why now so I can like get into it a little bit more, you know? So yeah, I'm hoping we get some answers to some things here sooner rather than later, because like I said, if we don't get it 
like starting in the next episode, it's just gonna be too rushed, and I don't know how I feel about that. Oh wait, did I think there were three episodes? Oh yeah, there's only two episodes left. D yeah, d dude, I don't know. I think this is the episode that needed to have started answering things, and it just didn't. So they have two episodes to explain a lot of stuff. I can almost guarantee at this point there's going to be a lot of unanswered questions going into season two. Not a huge fan of that. But, I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe in the next two episodes they are going to answer everything for me. So I will see you in the next episode, and that's about it.